Hello, and welcome to Brownie Ponders, in which I, an actual brownie, ponder over matters of philosophy, politics, psychology, sociology, and so on. Are you a biased person? In other words, do your beliefs, preconceived notions, and personal prejudices influence your outlook on certain concepts? Chances are, you are biased, very biased, and I am biased too. Everyone around you is biased, and while you probably already knew this, you'd be surprised just how biased everyone is, and how paradoxical bias can get. In all honesty, it isn't really possible to be even halfway unbiased. Let's break this down further, but before we get started, I will reiterate that all points expressed over over the course of this video are a product of my personal opinions, perspectives, and perceptions. Don't treat it as fact because it isn't. Most of you have some idea of what bias is, but just in case you've been living under a rock, let's define bias. Bias is defined as prejudice in favor of or against one thing, person, or group compared with another. A common misconception about bias is that it's always negative. But that couldn't be further from the truth. Bias can be good in some cases, bad in some cases, and neutral in others. Examples of generally positive or neutral biases include bias towards one's family and friends. Of course, this bias can and does get out of hand sometimes. You shouldn't allow your family and friends to do whatever they please, regardless of the law or morality, but I think we can all agree that you would treat your family member or friend better than you would treat a random stranger. Another example includes moral bias. Most all humans have a moral code that they abide by, and it may vary widely from person to person, but in the end, most agree that you should try to the best of your ability to be a morally upstanding person and not cause pointless harm to others and the environment. Another positive bias is bias towards children. Again, this can get out of hands, but in moderate cases it can be highly positive. It's because of this bias that children's mental and physical states are taken into account and accommodated in many societies, so that they don't typically work full-time jobs, end up in jail at the same rate and for as long as their adult counterparts, and are usually dependent upon a more capable guardian. Then there's the more stereotypical instances of bias that you're probably well acquainted with, the negative kind. This bias might manifest in the form of a hiring manager giving a job to a man rather than a woman, or a judge giving a lighter sentence to a white defendant than they would have a black defendant for the same crime. There's also a socioeconomic bias, in which wealthier individuals are given more opportunities than their financially challenged counterparts. Schools in wealthier areas get more funding than those in poorer areas. This leads to a self-fulfilling prophecy. Because the poor schools are kept poor and the rich schools are kept rich, there's a rift in educational quality and the same problem persists, because both schools keep pumping out the same graduates at opposite ends of the socioeconomic spectrum. This bias in particular is tricky to combat, considering virtually everything costs money and we can't logically make everything free, but there are plenty of cases of socioeconomic bias that have less to do with the objective availability of funds and more so to do with status and elitism. In modern years, social justice has become popular, and social justice entails the demolition of all things perceived to be xenophobic, prejudiced, and bigoted. Consequently, bias has gained some status of notoriety. Bias has become a negative trait that most people endeavor to avoid or minimize. But here's the thing. You're biased if you're trying to be unbiased. The issue with bias, assuming you consider it to be generally negative, is that attempting to avoid bias is essentially biased. Think about it. If bias is a thing perceived to be negative and one consciously alters their actions to accommodate this perception, then are they not being biased towards bias? Moreover, you're bound to produce an inorganic result if you skew your actions based upon attempting to be 100% unbiased. For example, there are many workplaces that try to achieve a higher level of equality and diversity by hiring a certain number of colored, female, disabled, or LGBTQ plus employees. But isn't it biased to fulfill a certain quota of quote-unquote diverse individuals? If you're hiring someone because you don't want to seem bigoted or in the name of tokenism without truly weighing qualifications and judging everyone on fair grounds, regardless of their potential to satisfy an agenda, isn't that biased? I would consider it biased because it has a negative effect on society as a whole. If this bias in the name of unbiasedness mindset persists, then firstly, individuals dubbed not diverse enough for whatever reason will lose equal opportunity, which is unconstitutional, and secondly, individuals dubbed diverse will also lose their right to be valued for their actual contributions, rather than for whatever inclusivity stats their workplace can slap on a website or use to get inclusivity-based funding. A position should never be given to someone on the basis of anything except that they fulfill the objective qualifications for that position. But returning to the greater topic at hand, we must admit that humans are prejudiced creatures. They like to think that they're creatures of logic and reason, but those concepts are tools that make sense only in the abstraction of humankind. Humans have proven since the beginning of time that they're near incapable of truly stripping back their personal interests, political correctness, and prejudices. Separating humankind from illogicality would be like separating sweaty kids from Fortnite. It's just about impossible. Just watch Vsauce's video on the future of reasoning. He does a great job explaining why reason at its very core is basically the antithesis of what humans define reasoning to be. It's, in essence, a social tool used to climb ranks unique to humankind. That is why human beings do illogical and unreasonable things, such as giving their money to the less fortunate, or spending thousands of dollars on pieces of art that serve no functional purpose. They are trying to reach a subjective conclusion on the basis of objectivity. It's an oil solution to a water problem. This is the conundrum of unbiasedness.
Let's take a minute to envision a world in which bias is no longer an issue. In this alternative reality, nobody views the world through the jaded lenses of their beliefs and prejudices. What do you think this would do to, say, the institution of relationships? Relationships would have no purpose for existing because they are essentially built upon a foundation of bias. We like and treat people differently when they're associated with us, and this leads to loads of bias. We might defend some of their bad behavior, put up with negative traits, and give them special treatment over the average person. This stretches from friends to romantic partners to children to parents to siblings and so on. Another result of unbiasedness would be that humans would have to confront realities through a lens of complete and proper reason rather than subjectivity and abstraction. They would have to confront realities such as that we have no logical reason to care for chronically ill individuals, create pieces of art or entertainment, or stay loyal to a single partner. These are all constructs that humans have created with biased hands, and to wipe the bias from those hands would be to undermine that construct entirely. The justice system would look very different also. There probably wouldn't be nearly as much of a need for prisons, reason being that recidivism rates are so high that logically speaking it would be better to eliminate those who have repeatedly offended society and will statistically continue to do so. This all sounds pretty extreme, and fortunately humans are in no danger of reaching this level of unbiasedness, but even making small steps in this direction could prove to undermine valuable constructs and institutions vital to public order. And that doesn't mean humankind has to remain blinded by narrow-mindedness, ignorance, and bigotry. We can make strides towards improvement through a little something called open-mindedness. I feel that people don't fully appreciate the difference between unbiasedness and open-mindedness. Unbiasedness is a complete lack of favoritism, prejudice, and preconceived notion. Open-mindedness, however, is the acknowledgement of these things and the consequent factoring of these variables into one's subsequent actions and impressions. A truly unbiased person, while lacking the fickleness of human ignorance, will instead have the coldness of an impartial entity. Conversely, an open-minded person has the warmth of humanity, but knows how to consult reason and avoid personal interest when need be. I'm sure most of you know someone who you would consider to be open-minded. Chances are they have principles and beliefs, but they just know how and when to put them aside and be fair and just. I know I've met people like that, and they're worlds better than individuals who make it their self-righteous life goal to appear as unbiased as possible, even when the situation doesn't require it, because those kinds of people are ridiculously annoying and don't achieve the result that they're hoping for. So maybe try working towards a more open, flexible mindset rather than attempting to erase all preconceived notions from your mind, because you're not going to get anywhere with that, and chances are you're irking everyone around you. It's popular in today's tolerance and agenda-driven world to try and erase all semblance of preconceived notions. Unbiasedness is a champion trait, and many endeavor to embody it. Firstly, this rarely ever works because humans are terrible at being objective. Secondly, even if someone hypothetically did succeed, it might not necessarily achieve the goal that they have in mind. Instead, I feel that it would be better to strive towards an open mind, which is both possible and far more agreeable than total unbiasedness. Open-mindedness implores us to acknowledge our beliefs and to take those into account when forming an impression or making a decision, so that we're as fair and just as possible without becoming self-righteous, problematic, or ending up disregarding our personal boundaries. And honestly, humans aren't even capable of being truly unbiased, so why bother trying? Thanks for taking the time to hear me out. Unlike you humans, I, a brownie, am capable of being 100% unbiased. That being said, if you're poor, a girl, a person of color, a kid, or over 30 years old, you can't watch my videos because I don't like you. That's all for now. Have a great day.